<laughs> Angie Battle from Des Moines is with us here. It's a farro and roasted butternut squash. And because you live in Des Moines, Des Moines, Des Moines. Des Moines. You say it Des Moines. That's yes. right. See, and you've yeah. lived there long enough to say that. So we I break have. the rules. I have. Oh, okay. Okay. All and, right. and we wanted to put you first because some, something tells me you're going to break the rules a little bit here with, with farro, which, which this is kind of great because it's kind of a nutty taste. I know the key is to, to cook it long enough to make it tender and chewy because that's the way I like it. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Oh, yes. good. I'm doing, I'm doing well already. You are doing well. <laughs> How should we get started? Okay, here? let's get started. So, in our pot, we got? we're going to add our water. Oh, the so you farro. Simmer, it, simmer it together? You're going to simmer it together. You want to add a pretty hefty dose of salt in there to okay. season the farro. You bring it to a simmer, cover it. Cool. Let it cook as long as it needs so to. So low, you just simmer it, simmer it until it's done? Yeah. Awesome. And yeah. what is farro? Uh, farro is a very ancient grain. It's a lot like quinoa. It, um, well, as far as the age of it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's very similar to spelt. You can interchange it with right. barley if you wanted. It's just a really good chewy. It's in the wheat family. Oh, cool. So nice. I know. There it's, you go. It's popular. So wait yeah. for a boil and then we'll cover it. Right. And then how do you uh, how do we do the rest? Okay. So Ready? the rest of it is. You just want to get, it's kind of a rustic dish. You don't have to make everything this here. the same size or. Nice. I like Do that. Do as you please. Yeah. Simple, right? Not trying to impress yep. anybody. Nobody. As long as Nobody it tastes good and looks good, right? <laughs> exactly. Mark, my, this recipe is for you. Uh, it's not really for my, my husband. He's not really a big fan of this, but. Mm -hmm. No? I love Faro. It's so good. So I know. He needs a lesson from you, Bridget. So <laughs> the onion. Add your butternut squash. This Do a little bit so of time. Cool. I didn't get quite enough time, nope. so just wanna do that. Give it a little, little whirl, little, little quick whirl. chop. You are mm -hmm. very good with the knife there. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about family. I always like to ask our viewers here as you cook along. Who are we cooking for at home? Well, I cook for my husband, and I have five-year-old twins, Liam and Grace. Whoa. We saw Liam. And he has the most beautiful red hair. Everyone says that, but Grace is also quite beautiful, Bridget. Well, she is. <laughs> but Liam's hair, wow, it's the color of the squash. Yes, it is. <laughs> He's fire red. So you get this mixed together. Mm -hmm. Just. This is fascinating. Do your little olive oil. So now, do you squash normally use butternut stuff. squash or do you use other squash? I use butternut, but you could do whatever your favorite Kabocha is. Kabocha or yes, curry that's my or She's hitting delicata. Some, okay. She's hitting some key words, Bridget. Do whatever. Do whatever. Which is do whatever to these yep. recipes. Oh, no, beauty. This is nope. really interesting. This isn't really like, you could make this dish your own. Mm -hmm. so. Cool. So how did we even figure this one out, this recipe? Actually, I got it on the back of a farro package. My did first package of farro, I was like, oh, that's good. And really? then it, uh, I need that baking sheet, please. And you modified it? I did modify it. To I do didn't it your way. like it quite the way it said to cook it, so Be I changed cool. it up a little bit. Okay, so sheet pan, olive oil, balsamic, thyme. Mm -hmm. A little salt. A little salt. You can, I'm not going to worry about the onions that nope. much. So, so you that, just kind of get it in a single layer and then put it in the oven. Perfect. Okay, off I go. That was like quick. It is quick. It's <laughs> a really fast dish put together. Was that even two minutes to put all that together, blend it, mix it? Talk about it, give the history about it, and, and it's now in the oven? It does take a little bit longer to cut the squash, obviously, mm -hmm. and things like that, if right. you're not familiar with but it. But you just proved you could have a kitchen full of husband and kids and be able to do this, every and night. nobody will mess you every up. Every night. And do the kids yes. like night. it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this if you mix all, it with pasta, this right? This is for all my friends. My, oh. <laughs> my family, not so much, but yeah. So I'm going to take that farro back. The farro We have that you the cooked. magically cooked farro. Yeah. Okay. After yeah. you cook it, you want to drain it. We've already done that. See, there's that tender look I mentioned at the beginning. Tender and chewy. Mm -hmm. You probably want to taste it a couple of times while you're cooking it. To yeah. make you sure just it jumped in here to see what we're doing, the farro and roasted butternut squash. Perfect. We've got Angie yeah. from Des Moines here is helping us out with a brand new cookbook. But you got the phone number there if you want to call in and be first in yep. line to grab the new Ready cookbook. Cook okay. So next, Bridget is going to get our magically finished mm -hmm. squash and onion. Tell me a little oh, bit about something great. you mentioned to me about the Midwest. Hot, right? You had an <laughs> Angie, you yes. had an experience in the Midwest, like a great experience in life. 
I'm gonna move this. You over mean here. in in California? Is that what you were well, talking about? Was there something about Midwest or something? You spent some time and had a great experience when you were. Oh, I did actually. Uh, I lived in Kansas City for about uh, eight years, You're and right. I had the chance to work for Dean and DeLuca. And they are. Um, it's a gourmet. I called it gourmet leftovers <laughs> because. Really. <laughs> everybody that in I had to pick. Kansas now. City. Um, well, Kansas City actually has a very high concentration of millionaires. There's a lot what? of corporate headquarters there. So really? there's a lot of people that don't like to cook, and I got the chance oh, to wow. make breakfast, lunch, and dinner for them. So that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. So what I did is I put all the squash and half of the red onion in this bowl. Okay. And then ah, got you got to mince up part of the onion just to okay. give it a little bit more texture. Bridget, have you done a lot with farro? A, a fair chef? bit. It's a nice substitute for barley or for rice, and it's got more nutrients. There's a cool okay. local Northwest company called Bluebird Farms that does a beautiful emmer, the emmer grain, you know, so spelt or farro. And it's delicious. It feels like it's gaining a little more popularity lately mm -hmm. with its. Mm -hmm. I love the colors. Okay, this one's boiling, so I'm just going to turn that down. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have this later, Mark. Okay. <laughs> this would be great with a steak. What do you think? Ooh. It'd be delicious. New York, a nice grilled New York. Yeah. I Beautiful. Be okay. Perfect. Okay, so then you're going to add your walnuts. Beautiful. Did you toast those? I did. They're okay. they're pretty, like you take them to the edge of being burnt, but not burnt. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm and with you. Spoon. I nice understand that. Got at home spoon. cooking lingo. <laughs> <laughs> not burnt. <laughs> not not burnt, burnt, almost. <laughs> uh -huh. Everything is in the cookbook nice that toast. Angie's doing here with yes. all the little secrets. So this will look this is this exactly is, like this at home. This dish definitely has some secrets. Yeah. I have I have a friend who thought that uh, Cherry, she thought that dried cranberries would be good in oh. in this if you wanted to like Christmas it up a little bit. Okay. So oh, great idea. Well, what about as, as a side dish for Thanksgiving? It'd be perfect. Yep. Yeah. A nice change. And it can be done in advance. Yes, I've made this a couple days in advance and it looks great. So, Perfect. mix that up. We're just about there, aren't we? A little dash of salt. Yeah. All right. And then could you add other herbs if you wanted? You could. Like I said, make it your own. All right, so. Beautiful. Another amazing recipe awesome. and how fast it's That's prepared, great. ready to go. All right, Garnish a little it. bit, okay. Do that. Do this. You know, and when you when you see this final shot here, this picture we get of the farro and roasted butternut this squash. Is awesome. Think about what you pay for a plate like this in a restaurant, but yet you can do it by making All your right. own because of the cookbook you're going to call and ask about to support public television and more cooks. Right, awesome. Angie? That's right. Right. Okay. <laughs> Little garnish. I buy all the books. This is beautiful. Okay. Okay. So then you just top it with a little goat cheese, and then you dig in. Dig in. All right. This. Go. So here's the farro, the butternut squash. I'm going to have a bite. Can I sneak a bite? Yeah, you go ahead. Don't hog it all, Mark. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm. Delicious. Mm -hmm. Nutritious. Like I said, with a steak. Bridget. Yum. I'm seeing it already. Breakfast I'm tomorrow with some eggs. I'm tasting it. Scrambled eggs. It just it's exciting. It's a great Thomas. recipe. It's in the cookbook. That's how we are nice able job. to do this with our viewers and uh, think about cooking on the show as well. 1-800-443-1999 and kcts9.org. We are doing pasta, rice, and grains here. Brand new show of KCTS 9 Cooks. Angie, what a great start. Sweet. Thank you. Nice job. Thank Thanks. you for being Fabulous. here. Fabulous. Good to be here. <laughs>